What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we've got another top five for you. Today we're gonna to be talking about some of the best new guns of 2022. I had to wait a little bit, I had to get a couple of these guns, try them out, and all the guns that we have on the list, I actually have in front of me right now and have rounds down through them, that way I can vet and tell you actually how good they are. That being said, we have a lot of honorable mentions on the list as well, guns I've seen, guns I've held but haven't shot, and could possibly be some of the best guns of 2022, or best new guns I should say, so we're gonna have quite a few honorable mentions at the end as well. That way I can give you guys kind of a list of what's coming down in the future and maybe what I'm interested in and gonna be reviewing here on the channel this year. In order to be on this list, you have to have came out in 2022 and also have to be pretty damn good because there's been a lot of guns already that came out in 2022. That being said, there's gonna be a good mix of different types of weapons on the table. So hopefully there'll be something for everyone and every price tier as well. Now between wind breaks, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you videos like this are possible. Almost every gun purchased here was purchased via the Patreon dollars. So if you wanna support the channel, that is the absolute best way to do it. There's a link in the description if you wanna sign up, I'd appreciate it. There's also a link in the description for a local shelter, the YSS in Ames, Iowa. It is a youth shelter and it's an awesome thing to do to go down and donate to those kids. There's a link in the description that brings you right to the donate page. And I'd really appreciate if you guys would go down and give them a couple bucks. They could really use your help. Starting that off, I wanna go into one of my favorite guns of the year by far. And this is gonna be the Gerson MCP35. It is a you guessed it, Browning High Power Clone. Uh, unlike the Springfield though, that comes in for thousands of dollars and doesn't work very well, the Gerson comes in at an astonishing $400. And so far we have about 300 rounds for this bad boy, uh, some remanufactured, it's mostly cheap ammunition, and it's been able to run it all with no issue whatsoever. Uh, it is styled after the classic Browning High Power, not like the new FN High Power, which is gonna have some upgrades that's coming out this year that'll actually be on the honorable mentions. Uh, but this guy's already out in a video Available for you to purchase in most gun stores, which is very nice. It has some interesting sights on it, but other than that, everything else is pretty browning high power, down to the pretty excellent trigger, I'd have to say. Uh, it's a single action design with a pretty quick reset, so you're able to shoot it really quickly, even though it's a little older design. Uh, slide serrations on it, got the classic browning high power cuts, very lightweight gun as well. It's got about a four and a half inch barrel on it. It's got enhanced controls by comparison to the standard browning because it has an external extractor and it also has an ambi safety for those lefties in your life, including my wife. So it's actually kind of a nice feature. Magazine release works well. Uh, magazines still don't drop free without removing the magazine disconnect, just like a standard browning, but it does does come with one 15 round magazine and these magazines are made by Metgar which makes sure they're pretty quality and they're actually pretty cheap as well so that's pretty nice. Overall, if you're interested in getting into the classics but you don't want to pay a ton of money and you want a gun that can kind of flex into concealed carry and home defense while still having some pretty classic looks, I think the Gerson is a good entry level gun for that. And I think it's one of the better guns you can buy actually uh, that's a steel frame or a metal frame gun for under $400. Sorry about the wind here. We didn't have any wind when we started this, but it's Iowa, so what the hell are you gonna do? Hopefully the dead cat on the mic is helping out, but if it's not, you can yell at me in the comment section. Now we'll get into number four here, and we'll pick up the price a great deal. We are gonna be talking about the Geisley Super Duty. Now the Geisley Super Duty, at first glance, looks like just another AR. Yeah, because it is. But it also is a very high quality AR that performs much better than almost every AR I've ever shot. Not only is this extremely reliable, extremely durable, and sub MOA accurate, uh, it also comes with a lot of features on it that would make you wanna have it if it was, let's say, the end of the world, which is why SOCOM just picked a bunch of these up. Uh, it has the Maritime Bolt Latch, it has the new Geisley X-Line Trigger, which you can only get in this particular gun currently, which is arguably the best trigger I've ever tried. Comes with the brace system on it, comes with Geisley's grip, and it comes with refined controls along with the awesome Geisley uh, Super Charging Handle here in case you wanna suppress it and you don't wanna get gas in your face. The real star of the Geisley Super Super Duty though is probably the rail system. Uh, it integrates a rail system that's not only lightweight and M-lock, but it does not lose zero. So if you're interested in running a D-ball or laser or anything like that, it is a very good way to go. You will gain uh, a lot of accuracy with that. Now also, it comes with this interesting uh, uh, flash hider here, but the real reason why I like the Geisley so much is whatever they did to the internals to slick them up. Uh, it has some of the softest recoil of any rifle I've ever shot, or pistol for that matter. This isn't a, a 10.5, 
.45 pistol configuration, but you can get them in 11.5 and uh, rifle configurations as well. That being said, this 10.5 shoots softer than most 12.5s and 14.5s I have. So uh, whatever they're doing in there is pretty freaking awesome. And for the price of around $2,000, yeah, it's expensive, but it's more than worth it. And it's one of those th guns where you kind of want to buy once, cry once. I mean, I have, a, I have enough cheap ARs to equal this, so why not sell those and buy one of these? Because you can only use one at a time unless you're dual wheeling. In at number three, we have the best handgun I've shot this year. This is the Wilson SFX-9. This is actually the four inch, and uh, it does come from Wilson Combat, so it is not cheap, but it is phenomenal. Now this is their solid frame 2011. Comes three and a half inch, four inch, and five inch, I believe, along with some X grip models and stuff like that. You gotta understand Wilson Combat is a custom shop, so when you buy this, you can put whatever features and accessories that you want on the thing. Mine has the X pattern with the co-witness sights with the RMR, all red dot mounts and everything are included, so feel free to add those if you want to get them. The solid frame, has the X-Check pattern on it, which feels very good. Awesome, awesome three pound trigger on it that has a comfortable pad that's flat based, but you can change that if you want to. Combat hammer, either ambi safety or not. And then it has the fluted barrel here with the big old bull barrel with the recessed cut, which looks absolutely fantastic. This gun's like grease shit on ice, super, super slick like every other Wilson Combat. Very reliable, very accurate, guaranteed two inches at 50 yards more accurate than any handgun shooter on earth. So if you're looking to do some awesome groups from the concealed carry platform, this is a really good way to go. Also, it has a manual safety on it as well. So if you're interested in that, as far as appendix carry and stuff, this is a phenomenal way to go. The reason why these guns are so sought after and the reason why they're so expensive is number one, they're hand fit. And on top of that, they're also a 2011 platform. If you understand what a 2011 platform is, they're basically a double stack 1911 with the best trigger in the business, best accuracy in the business. So you gotta understand if you wanna, if you want the bleeding edge of speed and accuracy, this is gonna be it. However, these start out at around $2,800, which is why they're not in the number one spot, because sadly, most people won't be able to afford this. But if you're interested in one, head down to Manning & Sons, he sent this over for me, I'd really appreciate it. Now, in at number two, we're gonna continue the theme of kind of expensive, but pretty awesome, and that is gonna be the Springfield Hellion. I can't believe I'm putting a Springfield on this list, but hey, when they knock it out of the park, they knock it out of the park. And the best way for Springfield to make an awesome gun is to import somebody else's. <laughs> this is the Springfield Hellion. It's actually a uh, Croatian gun, the VHS-2. Uh, they did make some modifications for the American market, which I think were big, big advantages, including the M-Lock rail and stuff. But this is a 16-inch semi-automatic uh, bullpup configuration uh, rifle in 5.56. Now, the cool part about this is it not only is it a bullpup, but they've actually figured out the ejection system because you can just pop it from one side to the other. No big deal, but they do have an ambi charging handle and full ambi controls, which is pretty sweet. Now, on top of looking like it came straight out of Starship Troopers, this thing actually functions really well. We have something like 500 or 600 rounds for this now. We're getting toward the end of the testing. Uh, my nephew shot a whole bunch of them. He absolutely loved it. And uh, the gun functions really well. The trigger is nice. The grip right from BCM fits really well. It takes AR mags, which is pretty awesome. And it actually has an adjustable length of pullback here, which I've never never seen on a bullpup before, which is incredibly appreciated, along with the plastic cheek piece they put over. A lot of times with bullpups, you'll see the back here being metal, and then in the cold, your hit, your face uh, obviously doesn't like that. So the, the uh, plastic cheek, cheek piece, especially for people who live in Iowa, is much appreciated. Now you're rocking the hollow sun on top of here, and on top of that, it does come with some pretty interesting flip up sights as well, that you actually have to press a button to flip up, uh, and I would know that if I wasn't an idiot, but here we go. Uh, overall, I could not express to you how much I like this gun, and honestly, this is one of my favorite bullpups I've ever fired. Now, it's probably up between this and the X95 from IWI. Uh, however, I don't have an uh, IWI right now, but I would like to get one at some point to do a comparison. Again, sorry for the wind, what are we gonna do? But the Hellion, I think, is a really good option if you're looking for something that just looks super badass, or if you're looking for something that's gonna do very well in CQB, this is a good option. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of the bullpup, the bullpup is a great idea in theory, 
not usually in action because it gives you a full length barrel with a short overall length of pull. If you put the action behind the trigger group or the trigger group in front of the action, whichever way you want to think of it, uh, you actually end up shortening the gun a great deal. The problem with that is, is that your action ends up being in the back. So uh, uh, reloads and uh, manipulations and malfunction clearing can be a little bit more difficult than normal. However, the Hellion has such good ergonomics, they kind of figured that out, which is really nice. So overall, I think it's a great concept done actually pretty well. So I gotta give the Hellion the number two spot, partly for its functionality, but partly because it looks really cool. Now we'll do like 19 honorable mentions, that way I can tell you all the guns that I'm interested in this year, and you can go look them up and decide for yourself. The number six spot on the list is gonna be the JP5 from JP. I'm gonna be getting that pretty soon. It is going to be the roller delayed AR-15 and nine millimeter that they're gonna have out. Very excited about that. Along with the other PCC that I've been waiting for for a long time, the MDP9 by Agastan Arms. Another gun that I'm excited about is the new FN High Power that's gonna be coming out here shortly. However, it's not out yet. It's uh, an advanced high power with some new features on it coming straight from FN, the company who put it out in the first place. Big ups to you, John Browning, you're the man. The Zastava M77 looks pretty good. The Hellcat Pro looks good. And finally, the SIG uh, 380 looks pretty awesome too. The P380, uh, the P365 in 380, I should say. We'll be having one of those on the channel in a couple of weeks. Wow, it's fucking hurricane winds now. What is happening, Yeah, Iowa? it's like, ruin your video. <laughs> but anyway, now we're gonna get to number one before we blow the shit away. So, Number one is the Canic Dark Side, or the Canic Rival, I should say. I prefer the Dark Side because the other one has gold on it and it looks a little cheesy. The Dark Side, however, to me looks really, really awesome, and it is the Canic I have been asking for for a long time. Canic has been making generational changes on the TP9 series for as long as I can remember, and this, to me, is the pinnacle of that innovation. Comes with awesome slide serration right out of the box, a full five inch barrel, fiber optic front, and blacked out rear with an included red dot and red dot mounting system that keeps the rear sight. You have a pre-cocked uh, P99 style striker fired trigger, which is absolutely fantastic. You can see here the pull is extremely short, the reset is extremely short, and that is one of the best triggers you're gonna be able to get in a polymer gun. Awesome undercut, Picatinny rail for lights, lasers, home defense, all that wonderful stuff. Hang your coffee maker up there, whatever you wanna do with it. It has an extended magazine release, back straps, great checkering, and it comes with three 18 round magazines. All that for around five to $600, making it one of the best buys in the, not only the competition world, but in the home defense or concealed carry world as well. If you guys are familiar with uh, carrying larger guns, like if you like carrying a Glock 34 or something like that, this is right up your alley because it's also extremely lightweight at around 26 to 28 ounces, depending on how you kit it out. So not only can it do absolutely everything, but it does everything pretty well. And on top of that, it's really damn cheap, which makes it hard to beat, and that's why it's number one on the best new guns of 2022. A lot of guns coming out though. A lot of people are gonna have different lists. If you wanna put your list down in the comment section, I sure would appreciate it. I don't know every single gun, but I sure would like to. So if you have your list, make sure to put it down in the comment section and I'll go over it and see if it's awesome. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.